and welcome to today's yoga chakra flow class with Young Living Starter Kit. It's gonna be an amazing yoga class today. I am so excited you've joined me. My name is Mallory Reese, the Oily Yogi, and I am so honored that we're getting on the mat together. Oils and yoga and the chakras just so align with each other. When we're talking about chakras and working with the chakras, it's all about supporting each chakra. Each chakra has a different function emotionally as well as physically. Each chakra governs a different physical part of the body, different emotions and life experiences are held in all the chakras. And what's amazing is that our oils are the same way. Each oil helps to support and work through different emotions. Each oil helps different organs of the body, different systems of the body. And each oil helps us to just get through life. And that's pretty much what yoga does for all of us as well, is just help us get through life and tread on this earth a little more peacefully. As you all know, I only use Young Living Oils because they are the purest. And as a yogi, it is important to me to support a company who is pure, who has integrity, and who gives back to the community and is all about walking a good, loving life. So let's dive in. Grab your lemon and peppermint essential oils. I love to start chakra work with these two oils because they are both cleansing and energizing. So taking your lemon oil, whenever we're doing chakra work, we always want to work on cleansing the chakras first. Rub the lemon in the hands. Lemon is a very cleansing oil. Take a deep breath. Feel the aroma of the fresh cut lemons. And then we're gonna actually touch the oil to each chakra point. So starting on Manipura, coming up to your second chakra, third chakra, fourth chakra, fifth chakra, sixth chakra, and seventh chakra. So lemon just kind of helps the intention of clearing out the chakras, doing a little cleansing work. And then we're gonna use peppermint. Sometimes a chakra can be a little stagnant, so using peppermint kind of just helps to wake up the chakra. Grabbing your delicious peppermint oil, taking a couple drops of peppermint, Taking a deep inhale. Allowing it up to wake up the whole nasal passage and then we'll wake up the chakras. So again, going through each chakra. Perfect, okay. So now we are ready to do the deep work of the chakras. If you're not too familiar with the chakras, check out my chakra video where I dive a little deeper into the inner workings of the chakras and all that kind of stuff. Today, we're gonna go right into the yoga asana. We will also be talking about the chakras and everything throughout the class and using our oils, but so. Join me on your mat. We will start with Mula Dilahara. Mula Dilahara is also known as our root chakra. It's located right at the base of the pelvis. It is our chakra that governs our fundamental needs, security, our fears are held in this chakra, social interactions, how we show up in the world, in community, is governed all in this chakra. Physically, our immune system is housed in this chakra. So for this chakra, we'll use our Thieves Essential Oil Blend. So grab your Thieves, 
Thieves is all about the immune system. It's a huge immune booster as well as a protecting oil. So it has cinnamon and clove in it, which are both strongly protecting oils. Thieves helps our emotional, our mental, and our physical state. So it goes so well with the chakra. Grab your thieves, put a couple drops in your hand. Now thieves is a pretty spicy oil, so we're not gonna put right on Mula Dolahara because it's a little bit of a sensitive area, even if you have clothes on. So we will put it on our feet. Our feet also have little root chakras on each of them that help us to ground into the earth. So putting it on your feet and we will start asana. Surya Namaskara A. Inhale, raising the arms up overhead. Exhale, releasing down. Inhaling, halfway lift. Hold the belly in. Exhale, planting the hands, stepping back. High plank. We'll lower down, chaturanga. Inhaling, up dog. And exhaling, up and back. Down dog. Taking your five breaths here in your down dog. Allowing the head to relax. Just noticing how the body feels in your first down dog. Bringing a little attention to the low belly and slightly drawing it in. On your next inhale, looking forward, bringing the feet to the hands, halfway lift, exhale and fold, inhale, rise all the way up, arms up overhead, and exhale, releasing the hands down. Two more, inhale, lifting up high, exhale and fold, inhaling, halfway lift. Exhale, plant the hands, step the feet back, lower down, chaturanga. Inhaling, up dog, and exhaling, up and back, down dog. Five breaths here. Breathing in. Again, tuning into the body. Yoga is to yoke. So tune into Manipura. Hug the pelvis in. On your next inhale, looking forward, step forward. Inhale and lift, exhale and fold. Inhale, rising all the way up, and exhale, releasing the hands down. Last one. Inhale, lift the arms high, exhale and fold. Inhaling, halfway lift. Exhale, plant the hands, step or jump it back if you're ready. Lowering down, inhaling, up dog, and exhaling, up and back, down dog. Five breaths, again, tuning in. If there are any movements you need to take in your dog, feeling the body, tune in to the pubis. To the sit bones, drawing them together, activating Manipura. And your next inhale, looking forward, bringing the feet to the hands, halfway lift. Exhale and fold. Inhale, 
inhale, rising it all the way up, arms up overhead, and exhale, releasing hands by the sides. Surya Namaskara B. Inhale, bending into your knees, coming down into your chair, lifting the arms. Exhale and fold. Inhaling, halfway lift. Exhale, plant the hands, step it back, high plank, lowering down. Inhaling up and exhaling back. Virabhadrasana one, right side, bringing the right foot forward. On your inhale, lifting all the way up. Exhaling, lowering down. Stepping foot back, lowering down, chaturanga. Inhaling up dog. And exhaling up and back, down dog. Virabhadrasana, left side, left foot forward. Inhaling, lifting it up. Exhaling, lowering down. Flowing through your vinyasa. Lowering. Inhaling, up dog. Exhaling, up and back, down dog. Five breaths. Tuning in with the body. Feeling that grounding and uplifting energy of the sun salutations. Your next inhale, looking forward, bringing the feet forward. Halfway lift. Exhale and fold. Inhale, rising all the way up, bending into the knees. Chair pose. And exhale, releasing down. Let's do one more. Inhale, sinking into your chair, lifting up. Exhale and fold. Inhaling halfway, exhaling, stepping or jumping the feet back, lowering down, chaturanga, inhaling up dog, exhaling down dog. Warrior one, right side, inhale, lifting up, exhale and lower, flowing through your vinyasa, inhaling up. And exhaling back. Left side, warrior one. Inhaling high. Exhaling lower. Flowing through your vinyasa. And exhaling down dog. Five breaths in your down dog. Allowing the breath to flow. Feeling the strength in the body. Feeling the health and the vitality flow through. Your next inhale, looking forward, using the core to bring the feet forward, halfway lift. Exhale and fold. Inhale, sinking into the knees, rising up with the heart, and releasing the hands down. Standing in your mountain, standing in Tadasana, feeling the heart, And then slowly opening the eyes if they're closed. And we're going to transition to Savistana Chakra, our second chakra. Grabbing your digives. So Savistana is all about fluidity and movement and ease. This chakra also helps to govern part of the digestive system, the large intestines, and the colon, which are very important to have everything moving properly. So your digize, digize is all about the digestive system and getting the body to move and 
flow. We love moving and flowing. So grabbing your digest. The oil doesn't want to drip out. Sometimes doing a little round movement, a little around movement with the oil bottle will help. Okay, we're gonna take digest and put it right on our second chakra, just beneath the belly button. Okay, so as we move through these next poses, we're gonna have lots of fluidity and really focus on the second chakra. The second chakra is in line with Uddiyana Bandha, one of our pelvic locks that we pull in to help stabilize everything. So as we're moving through these poses, really focus in on this area, bringing healing and strength. Coming back to the top of your mat, we're gonna take a big step out with the right foot and then spin around to the right, extending the arms, coming down into Trikonasana. Again, moving from here, Exhale, reaching the arms forward. And when you're ready, releasing right hand down, inhaling, looking up towards the left hand if you can. Five breaths. Feeling the length in the legs. Feeling the engagement of Stavistana. Imagine the chakra rotating and flowing. Inhaling, coming up, using the strength of the core. We'll come around to the left. Taking another deep inhale, draw length. Exhale, shoot the hips back. Reach, 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 reach forward. Coming down. Trying to keep equal distance on either side of the torso. Five breaths. Again, bringing your focus and intention back to the Stavistana Chakra, our pelvic chakra. On your next inhale, slowly coming up. We'll spin back around to the right. This time coming down into Warrior Two. So sinking down, Warrior Two. On the exhale, releasing the right elbow either to the knee, bringing the left hand in line with the ear. If it's available for you, you can even bring the right hand down. Taking a couple breaths. Again, bringing your focus and intention to your pelvic chakra. Allowing everything to flow. Inhale, lifting up. Exhale, spiraling the toes back in. Take wide-legged forward fold. Inhale, lifting. And exhale, lowering down. Inhale, lifting up, fluidity. Exhale, use the core to bring you down. One more time. Inhale, lifting, exhale, lowering, hanging out here, allowing gravity to take effect. And then on your next inhale, bringing the hands out in front of you, and we'll take a little twist, grounding through the right hand. Inhale, lifting up the left, keeping the hips as Stable as possible. And exhale, releasing that side. Twists are so good for our Stavisana Chakra. Inhale, other side. Lifting up. And exhale. Bringing the hands back down, releasing back down one more time. Maybe the head will make contact with the ground. 
Then inhale, coming back up. Bringing the hands to the hips, grounding through the core and lifting up. We'll take the other side, warrior two, sinking down. Then when you're ready, left elbow to left knee. Inhale, lifting it up. If you can take it deeper, you can bring the hand down. Lifting, allowing the fluidity of the body to move and pulse. And on your next inhale, slowly coming back up. And we'll take a big step to the front of the mat. Beautiful. And allowing the body to ease this time again. Big step out with the right foot, keeping the hips square, taking pyramid pose. Inhale, lifting up. Exhale, forward fold. Releasing over the knee. Couple breaths here, really engaging Stavistana, allowing it to pull in. And we'll take revolved triangle. So hopping your right hand on the outside of that left foot. If you need a block, grab a block. And then when you're ready, inhale, twisting it out. Whoops! See, even I fall out. Twisting it out. And then inhale, coming back, lifting up, switching out the feet. Hands to hips, inhale, draw length. And exhale, releasing down. Coming into your revolve triangle, placing the opposite hand on the outside of the foot. Use your block if you need. And when you're ready, revolving it up. Really engage Stavistana here. Use that engagement to help twist it out. Then inhale, using your core, slowly coming out to center and taking a big step forward. Okay, moving on, coming up to the Manipura Chakra, one of my favorites. Grabbing Citrus Fresh, taking a couple drops of your Citrus Fresh, Rubbing the hands together, taking a deep inhale, feeling the energizing of all those citrus oils, and then rubbing the oil right on to your Manipura Chakra, right in between the lowest part of the ribs there. Okay, so the Manipura Chakra is our power center. I love the chakra when it's used the right way. So Manipura is our willpower. It's energizing, it fires us up. It also physically controls the detoxification system of the body. So we use Citrus Fresh, because Citrus Fresh has those energizing properties. It kind of helps to spark us up, get us going. And then we also use the citrus oils for detoxification. It's a huge detoxifying oil. 
Very, very powerful. Okay, let's flow. So taking a vinyasa, inhaling, lifting the arms high, exhale and fold. Inhaling halfway, exhale, plant the hands, step it back, flowing through your chaturanga, inhaling up and exhaling back. Inhaling right leg high, lift it up, exhale, knee to nose, fire up that core, think about Manipura, pull it in, inhale, extend, exhale, pull it in, inhale, extend, Exhale, pull it in. Last one. Inhale, extend. Exhale, pull it in. Inhale and lift. Exhale, release. Inhale, left leg high. Exhale, pull it in. Inhale it up. Exhale, pull it in. Inhaling up. Exhale it in. Last one. Inhale up. Exhale, really use Manipura, pull it in. Inhaling high, exhaling, release. Inhaling, look forward, step the feet forward, bringing them through on to your seat. Okay, one of my favorite, favorite core exercises for Manipura, remember we're firing up the core, we're firing up our willpower is Navasana, boat pose. So bringing, coming into your boat, coming back on to your tailbone just slightly, lifting it up. If you need to stay here, stay right here. Pull in Manipura and activate Stavistana too. If you can, you can extend the legs and the last challenge is extending the arms. We'll hold it five breaths. You've got this. Use your willpower, use that core to get you through. You are stronger than you think you are. For three, two, one. Releasing the legs down, bringing the knees wide. You can give them a little release. Okay, two more, you've got this. Coming back, coming into your pose. When you're ready, extending the legs if that's where you're at. Five breaths. Imagine bringing the torso and the legs closer to one another. Use your strength, use your will. You can do hard things. For three, two, one. Releasing, release the legs, leaning forward. Okay, last one. Coming in, lifting up, coming into your fullest expression that you have. Last five breaths. You can do this. I know it. All right, three more breaths. Two. And one. Slowly release. Roll over the knees, jump it back, high plank, flowing through your vinyasa, inhaling up and exhaling back. Looking forward and bringing the feet forward, coming down into your malasana. I'm gonna turn sideways so you can see me. So coming down into your malasana, sinking the hips back, Opening the legs, touching the pelvis, tucking the pelvis just a little bit. As the hips open and the ankles open, you can try and angle the feet a little more parallel to one another. Be here for just a couple more breaths. Okay, so last pose in our Manipura sequence, crow pose. If you haven't done arm balances before, now's your chance to try. If you know where we're going, go straight into your core, or excuse me, your crow, use that core. If you're not sure, I'll set you up. 
So planting the hands, bringing the knees as close to the armpits as you can. Start to lean forward, look forward. You can lift one foot and then maybe the other foot. Use the core to lift up. Use the shoulder blades spreading apart for three, two, one. Lowering down with grace and ease. Rolling out the wrists if they need to be rolled out. And then just gently taking a seat grabbing your raven your raven oil blend we're going to move up to anahata our heart chakra this is my other favorite chakra opening the heart allowing the heart to be open anahata is all about finding love true and deep love for yourself so that you may then express love to others, no matter how easy or difficult. Express love to your highest self, to the divine, to God. That's, I love Anahate because it combines our lower chakras, which are much more earthly. They're very much, a lot more physical. And our upper chakras that are much more spiritual. So this is the balance in between. Grabbing your raven. Raven is an opening oil. It helps to open up the heart and the lungs. Really good for the respiratory system and the cardiovascular system. And then just rub raven all on the heart. Let's do our Anahata flow. So coming in to your plank pose, <clears throat> making your way into plank, and then when you're ready, lowering all the way down to the heart, relaxing the feet, we'll come into Sphinx. Making your way into Sphinx, pulling the heart through the chest, Activating the upper back. Remember, our chakras shine through front and back. Couple more breaths. And then slowly lowering down. We're going to come into locust pose, bringing the hands back behind you, backs of the hands down. Inhale, use the upper back muscles, lift the heart, lift the legs. We'll be here for five breaths, activating the back to help open the front for three, two, one. Releasing feet down, grounding palms, lifting up, and exhaling back. On your next inhale, looking forward, coming back into plank, lowering down, chaturanga. We're going to play with the shoulders to open the heart, so extending the left hand out to the left, elbow directly out from the shoulder, 90 degree angle at the elbow, and then just roll on to that left side. Taking a few breaths here, opening up the packs. And then slowly coming back to center, 
setting it up for the right side and slowly rolling on to your right side. Slowly coming back down, taking one last heart opener. Actually, we're gonna do one before that. Let's open up the quads just a little bit. We're opening up the front body. So bending into the right foot, reaching back, seeing if you can bring the heel to the glute. If you need a strap and just stay here, perfectly fine. But if you can, start to bring it in, flip the hand around and stay. Couple breaths, breathing into the heart, lifting the heart. Slowly releasing that side, coming to the opposite side, bringing the foot in, lifting up. And then releasing Lowering down and coming into Dhanurasana, our bow pose. When you're ready, inhale, lifting up. Really opening the heart here, using the legs to help lift the heart a little bit more. I love to imagine I'm at the front of a boat, one of those little mermaid things. And then slowly lowering down, lowering. If you need to give the hips a little shake out, squaring the chin, if it's not, lifting up, up dog, and exhaling up and back, down dog. Couple breaths in your down dog. And then on your next inhale, looking forward, coming back on to the knees as we travel up to Vashuddha, our throat chakra. Grabbing your pan away. Vashuddha is our center of communication. So it's where we find our true and authentic voice. Physically, the chakra controls all of like the neck muscles that get very tight for many of us, especially if we feel that we've been restricted in voicing our true selves, our true opinions. So taking your pan away and rubbing it all over the neck. If you're a little sweaty, it might be a little bit warm. Pan away is kind of like icy hot. It has, it's like that cool minty feeling, but then there are the warmer oils, so it can have that icy hot. So if you need some coconut oil or even olive oil, anything that's in your pantry, any type of fatty oil, you can put that on, because sometimes the sweat intensifies the heat from the oil. Okay, so let's take Coming back in. So pan away helps to release the neck muscles, telling the body it's okay. Pan away also goes deeper into the pain of the emotions of what has kept you suppressed from speaking your truth. So opening up the throat chakra so you can speak your truth. Coming back into your down dog, lifting up high. Looking forward, coming down onto the knees. We'll take camel pose. This is a great heart and throat chakra opener. We're going to take two. First one, you don't need to go as deep, and then second one, you can go a little deeper. So inhale, grabbing your ribs. Inhale, lift your ribs up. Lift your neck up. You can bring the hands to the hips and stay right here. Mm -hmm. 
Inhale, coming up. Settling down for a moment. Grounding. Okay, round two. Going as deep as you feel comfortable in your body today. Inhale, lifting up through the chest. Exhale, dropping back, finding your heels if that's available. Inhale, coming back up, using the core. And exhale, sitting down. Releasing the head down, grounding in. And then when you're ready, starting to take some neck circles. You can stay on the shins, or if you would like, if it's more comfortable for you to come onto your full seat. Come onto your seat, intuitively feeling, breathing in. Relaxing the neck as much as possible. If you find a little sticky spot, hang out there. Allow the body to process whatever it is it needs to process. And slowly coming back up. Okay, moving up to Ajna, our third eye chakra, our chakra of intuition, our chakra that's deeply connected to our gut, the gut-brain connection, our chakra that when clear and in balance, we have clarity of thought, our inner wisdom is able to truly come through. Grabbing lavender for the chakra, taking a couple drops of your lavender, and then taking two fingers, and just rubbing the third eye. Lavender is really good at relaxing and calming the nervous system, calming the mind, and in order for us to tap into our third eye, we have to be able to calm the mind so we can sort out what the clutter of the outside world is to what the wisdom of the inside world is. So coming down into child's pose, bringing your third eye down to the ground, Relaxing the hands back behind you, connecting in, couple breaths, slowly making your way. slowly coming all the way down onto your back. We're going to take our shoulder stand, if that's okay, on your neck. If not, you can just do legs up in the air. If you are ready for the full pose, engaging the core, lifting the body up, Grabbing onto the low back and lifting up into your shoulder stand. We'll be here five breaths. Five. 
bringing your focus and intention to the third eye. And then slowly coming down into your plow pose, Halasana. You can clasp the hands and bring the hands back behind you. Another five breaths. These poses are deeply inward looking poses. They help to settle the nervous system and bring us into ourselves. Taking Karni Pudasana, bending into the knees, bringing the knees on either side of the head or even onto the third eye, if that's comfortable. And slowly straightening the legs, lifting back up for a breath. Exhaling, halasana, releasing the arms down. And then with control, slowly lowering all the way down, extending the legs. And we'll come up into matsyasana, our fish pose. When you're ready, coming up onto the elbows, Releasing the head back. Five breaths. Looking, gazing up towards the third eye chakra. And then slowly releasing back down, bringing the knees into the chest and gently rocking side to side, massaging out the low back. And then when you're ready, doing a slight rock and roll to bring yourself all the way up. And will join me in meeting the Sahasara Chakra, our crown chakra, grabbing your frankincense. Our crown chakra is our biggest connection point to the divine, to the universe. And frankincense is a deeply, deeply spiritual oil. It's deeply healing. Grabbing your frankincense, taking a couple drops into the hand. Inhaling and then placing the oil on to the crown. Feeling the vibration of this oil just slowly flood over you. And we're gonna take a really grounding pose. So you have two options. You can either take rabbit pose or if headstand is your practice, take headstand. For rabbit pose, you're gonna come back in just as if you're coming into balasana, but we're gonna bring the top of the head down onto the mat. This is how we connect the crown chakra and the root chakra, the earth, together to kind of help end and well round our practice. Bringing your head down, grabbing onto the heels, lifting up, staying here five breaths, or if headstand is in your practice, binding the hands behind the head, and slowly lifting up, taking your five breaths in headstand. And 
you're in headstand, slowly making your way back out. If you're in rabbit or headstand, coming down into child's pose, releasing down, allowing the body to relax. And then slowly making your way back up. And the last oil we will use today is copaiba. Grabbing your copaiba. Copaiba is a magnifying oil. So we're going to put this oil on each chakra point. And it'll help magnify the intention and the healing of all the other oils we've used. Take an inhale of your copaiba. And then when you're ready, touching Manapura, Stavistana, excuse me, Muladohara, <laughs> Stavistana, Manipura, Anahata, Vishuddha, Ajna, Sadhasada. And then we'll slowly make our way down into Shavasana. Taking your time and coming down if there's any last pose that you need, taking that pose. In Shavasana, we let the body fully relax. We allow the asana movements to take their effect. We allow the oils to work through the body, knowing that the body naturally knows what to do with each oil and where the oil needs to go to bring the most healing. Relaxing, surrendering. I will cue when it's time to come out. Gentle movements. You can wiggle the fingers and the toes. Maybe rock the head side to side. And when you're ready, bending into the knees and rolling off to one side. Coming on to your seat. Taking your time. Bringing your hands to heart center. Thank you for joining me today in our chakra flow class. Have a wonderful rest of the day. Namaste.